so what's the, what's the title of your book? Do you have a, a title yet? You're like, it's building a second brain, building a second brain. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like you've been sort of a, a figurehead in thinking about strategies for organizing personal knowledge and actually making a system that works for people for, you know, for, for real knowledge work, for having better ideas, for like getting control over all the crazy inputs that are coming into your life, like making sense of all this stuff. And, and I, I sort of think of you as like the David Allen for writers, right. Of like, or for, for things that aren't just tasks for things that are like longstanding ideas that you're trying to develop. Um, yeah, you know, I aspire, that's what I aspire to for sure. <laughs> yeah. He, he was all about like stress-free productivity and creating an external system that like works for your like tasks and things, but yeah. certain kinds of insight you can't really put an immediate deadline on. And so I, I, I've been really impressed by a lot of your thinking in this space. Our historical beef is just about tools. Um, cause you've seen the rise and fall of probably a hundred different note taking apps in the course <laughs> of doing this and, and people pitching you to try to get you to, to use this. But, uh, yeah, my, my beef with the, I, I similarly have a lot of disdain for the industry as a whole, cause most people are not actually trying to think things through from first principles and, and build a new kind of system. But I hate files and folders. And I think that a lot of the problems that people have around organizing things are because your ideas don't fit naturally into files and folders. And so our beef has been about whether or not there was a need for a new tool in this space. And uh, yeah. 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 Um, so, so today we're going to, this is, is this your first time like actually using Rome yourself? Like, yeah. Okay, this cool. Kind of, so this will be a pretty pages, but this will be the first time interacting. Okay, cool. So yeah. So what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to, I'll start sharing my screen right now. Um, and we can like censor out part of it. But what I'm going to just do is I'm going to create a new graph, um, which uh, unless you have a better name for it, we could either call it Forte Labs or Forte Rome or. Uh, so can this, this is permanent. Can this not be changed, this, this name? Yeah, but we can also, you can always create other ones and you can export the data and import it into those. So <coughs> but like, uh, yeah. So if you wanted this one to be, this is sort of, potentially like a throwaway one just for these quotes. Um, we could even just call it quotes. Um, yeah, I mean, the simple would just be those 100, 100 knowledge management quotes or Tiago's. It's going to be the URL for it too, though. Oh. So um, if, it's, if it's short enough to remember. We could just keep it simple and say Forte Labs dash Rome. Okay. Let's uh, say left room. Great. And so I am currently the admin of this. So this is just, you know, the, the quick so the videos that pop up when you first sign up. Um, Can I just say, I have, I have the feeling that this is a historic moment right now. I think it is. I think it is. You know, this is like, this is, uh, this, the the note taking Cold War has been has been going on for like I think this is the first you know people who actually care enough about this stuff that they've been fighting on Twitter about it. Um, but not not just that. I feel like like I've been like most of my like derision of Rome has been convincing myself to not move to something else it's been most like my whole twitter feed is mostly giving me giving myself advice to myself <laughs> yeah 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 although you've said that you wouldn't follow yourself on twitter so that's kind of interesting that is true maybe you don't, you know maybe, i'm like, kind of a jerk so but i i kind of feel like i mean it's almost like inevitable that i'm gonna switch to rome it's just a question of when yeah i feel like now i'm, I'm like taking the red pill and i'm not gonna yeah. be able to know what i'm about to find out <laughs> well, there's 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 a lot of pressure for, so hopefully I don't, I don't fuck this demo up. But yeah, so this is just when you first, you know, open up Rome, there's a lot of, we try to make it, the, the way we talk about it is it's sort of like Excel for tech. So it should be really easy to get started, but then there's a lot more that you can learn. And so these are just some of the helpful key commands that, that people um, can learn. And then this is, this is sort of gives you a link to the help database to like, you know, the welcome to Rome page. Um, and these little help videos that, that are just for like the very most basic features of Rome. So we don't have, uh, you know, we don't send email alerts when you add other editors. So I'm just going to pop the link in the chat so that um, we can both, we, we have, 
and growing a lot, but we're still a pretty small team and we sort of focus on like the core experience rather than a lot of the things that people come to expect. So the sharing is not, um, it's real time collaborative, but it is. It but is should, I, should I do create a Roam account? Um, yeah, so you are gonna need to sign in and then you, if you just uh, create that account and then visit that URL that I gave, you're now an editor on that, um, on this. And so this is gonna appear in your, like if you ever go to, um, uh, like, you know, if you if you are on any any page and you click this this name for these pages, if you scroll down, you'll see graphs shared with me. And so this currently is going to be a graph that's shared with you because the admin looks at it. Um, and then if you just go to when you sign into Roam, you see um, because you do not have a like paid account yet. Um, so you'll see like a, a payment sort of wall, but if you scroll down, um, you'll find all the graphs that are shared with you. And so you don't actually need to pay for Roam in order to use this database. Um, you okay. can have unlimited collaborators on a database, and so none of them have to be um, paid users. So the only the only people who have to pay for Roam right now are the ones who are sort of admining graphs. Um, so like people who are managing a graph for a team or for a research project or who just want their own personal one that nobody else is okay. aware of. So yeah, so if I go to here, I can see, where, where do we name it? Forte Labs Roam um, over here. And so I can see that I've, I've shared it with you. It's a private database currently, but I can also make it publicly, um, publicly editable or publicly viewable. Okay. So let's see. So I have the um, I have the Evernote note here, and I decided to not do any cleanup. Great. So let's see. Let's. Um, so the first thing I would say is, so I'm going to just take a couple notes the way that I I tend to do them. This is you know. Um, so like the the first idea of Rome is that the default location for notes is usually a daily note. Um, so like I tend to like timestamp things in my life. And I would say like, you know, uh, peace summit um, between Tiago Forte and Connor White Sullivan, right? Um, and, you know, but we might actually just say Tiago and Connor, right? Um, and so what I've just done here is I've just made a link for each of our names. And so you know, we can see all the things that happen if we ever have, you know, a conversation with each other again, you know, you can just, you can filter to just focus on those. Um, but uh, so this is going to get interesting in a second, but this is just showing off like the daily notes. So what I actually think we should do is we should go to, what, what do you think we should call, what's the, the page called in your Evernote? Uh, just BASB quotes. BASB quotes. Um, so yeah, every time you type in those double square brackets, and this is also a thing that, um, is a, uh, seeing the brackets as a toggleable feature. I'm, I'm holding control and hitting C and then B to toggle this. Um, say that again. You're holding control and hitting, um, holding control and hitting first C and uh -huh. then B. So this is like, eventually there'll be just a settings page where you can decide whether you want to show the, the, the sort of Roam markdown. Um, but, uh, sometimes these brackets are like, I, I've seen you tweet about how you hate brackets. And, <laughs> um, so I'm just letting you know that you can change that as a setting. So you don't have to see the brackets. Um, the brackets yeah. are just so that you can, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show how the brackets get really useful in, in a second after we put these quotes in. So if we just click on BSAB quotes, um, like I'm actually just going to create a, a top level thing so that we can, if we want to tag all the quotes as a certain thing we can, but so just where there's that second bullet point. Um, if you just want to paste all the notes in there and let's see what this formatting looks like. It might be a little want, bit of a mess. Okay. Are you sure you want the whole, it's quite a extensive. How many pages is the, the thing? Let me see. It's 4,000 words. Um, let's try it first. And if we need to break it into like three different sections, then we can, but let's see if the, uh, Let's see if, if 
how good our copy paste can handle that conversion. What would be the limitation? What's going to happen if it's too many? Uh, it'll say paste is too large, and it'll just it it just will, you know, give you an alert that'll tell you not. Okay, to here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Nice. <laughs> Woo! Woo! That was anticlimactic. Okay. Sweet. All right, cool. So here's the first thing that we can do. Um, are any of these people, I guess we can, we can just experiment real quick. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is, um, I'm just going to highlight one of these people. Um, actually, do you know, do you know of anyone who you, you're, you already know has multiple quotes in here? No. Okay. Well, let's try Shakespeare. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just highlighting the word Shakespeare and I'm typing double brackets. And so what this has done is it's created a page for Shakespeare. And so... Wait, so real quick. So you just selected Shakespeare and then you hit bracket twice? Hit bracket twice. And it's just and if you map. create the brackets on the front end, it adds them on the back end, right? If you're, if you're selecting something. So actually, let's, let's try this here with something that we know there's going to be multiple things for. So I'm just going to create one for memory because I'm kind of curious like how many quotes in here are about memory. So... I've just created a page for memory and now I've got these unlinked references. And so this is just going to search for any use of the term memory um, in, in the database. So there's two quotes right now about memory. And so if I click link all, now I've got all of the quotes about um, memory, like on a memory page um, from building a second brain quotes. And so, um, I think what I actually want to do here, though, is... And is, uh, is that any mention of memory just within this database? Just within this database. Is that so, the default, is it like the default boundary is the database? Yeah, so so databases are like... Um, usually we encourage people to just say, like, have one database for all your... for your second brain, right? Because, like, your your work notes and your like relationship notes might be like closely interconnected. Um, we don't yet have really like granular sharing permissions. So, you know, uh, because it's, it's such a linked data structure. Um, like the reason Rome's initially slow to load is because we, we load sort of like your whole second brain into memory so that you can really quickly link things together, um, which I'll show in a second. Um, well, I'll just show this real, real quick actually. Like, so let's say that like, uh, let's say that there were more than three here and we just wanted to say, you know, um, I just want to say Connor's favorite quotes, um, you know, about memory. And I wanted to say that um, the faintest ink is more powerful than the strongest thing. So what that just did is if I now click here, right, this is in, inside this whole building a second brain quotes, which is going to be a big, a big thing. But if I scroll down, um, you'll see on one of these, there will be a footnote for, um, for that. Let's see if we can see that one. Uh, actually, let me just make it right there. Bit. Memory. Um, and so, you know, I've referenced the thing, which is on this building a second brain's quotes page. And if I click here, I can see that it's inside Connor's favorite quotes on, on the memory page. Right. Okay. So that's just like, um, so yeah. So what I originally wanted to do is just see if you have other things from Shakespeare and it looks like you've got another reference to Shakespeare. Um, and this is, this is now an unlinked reference, right? Like that was Rome finding these occurrences. Yeah, that was Rome finding it. And so the idea here is that like, you know, it's, it's your second brain. So it's not, it doesn't really, uh, the best Rome wants to do is to make suggestions for you, right? But if you think that like that quote isn't really about memory, like it's, you know, yeah, it, or it's not about, it's not something that you really want connected to the Shakespeare note, even though Shakespeare is a word inside here, because here, right? Like in this example, this is a, um, how carefully should we peruse Shakespeare's notes used in compiling his plays? Um, like it's not a quote from Shakespeare, yeah. right? This is a quote from Shakespeare. Um, this is more a quote about Shakespeare. So you, so you might not like want to have it um, linked. And so, but you know, if you do want it linked because you want to be able to search for all quotes, including the ones that reference Shakespeare, then 
then you can click link. So, um, but, but that's, it's leaving it up to me. So if I don't click that link button, then it's just left as unlinked. It's just left as unlinked. And the main thing that that, that means is it just means that like, if you do, um, uh, like if you go into, let's just, let's just go back into the daily notes for a second. Um, like if I wanted to, and this is, this is not for your, like, uh, maybe your, your late adopter audience. This is more of like a power feature. Um, how did you insert that? Uh, so I, the slash command is sort of our like magic good things command. And so this is where all of the like sort of advanced features of Rome show up. Okay. Um, it's also just like that way you don't have to remember syntax for things. Um, uh, so like, you know, if I wanted to do, you know, a Kanban board, right. Um, where I'm like to do, you know, starting, finishing, right. Um, nice. said here, I want to do like, uh, ink, right. Um, if I want these sort of fancy features, right. That are basically just, you know, different representations of the underlying structure, then, um, those are all going to be in my slash command. Okay. Um, and so what I did was I looked into the slash command and we have this query and, so this is just looking through your database, um, particularly for references. So I look for anything that's about Shakespeare and is also about memory. Right. And now this is going to give me, um, the, the queries are looking at the entire indentation path. So like in Rome, Rome is, and you know, we aren't opposed to hierarchy, right? We're not opposed to like, like, you know, being able to zoom in and zoom out on stuff. Um, we are opposed to this idea that like only one place for things. So yeah. if I zoom in on things, um, its own page, right? So you can zoom in on any of these bullet points. Um, and everything in the indentation path, right? Um, so like, you know, if instead you wanted to say, um, like if you wanted to do a query for, let's say that actually instead of calling it P Summit, we, we wanted to just call this, um, well actually let's, let's, let's show this real quick. Um, this is the other, the other advantage of, uh, of Rome being more of a database than just a file system. Um, oh, is like, let's say that uh, P Summit actually should be meaning. If I change the title of that note, then it's everywhere. Everywhere, right? So yeah. like, you know, if I, if I misspelled your name the first time, right, um, then, you know, I can, I can correct it later on. Um, cool. So yeah, so, um, so for instance, like we might say that, um, actually, let me go back here. Let me, let me make this into, um, instead of calling that quotes, let's just call this favorites. Uh, well, let's call it favorite quotes. Um, and so if I go to the, um, like right now we have, we have a page for Connor and Connor White Sullivan. Um, so I might, if I wanted to like kind of unify those, I could say, I want to do a query for anything that's tagged with either Connor or Connor White Sullivan. Okay. This is a, a little hacky right now, but that's just going to pull in all the notes that have either of those tags. Um, so let's go. Uh, all right, let's go back. Let's go back. This is just this is just demoing, but actually, I wanted to dive into the actual quotes. Yeah, here. see, it's good to see how the the functionality works. But since we have this treasure trove of quotes, let's see how. Like, if you were downloading this database for your own use, what? How would you start to sort of shape it for? for yeah, I I think so. What I might do is I might say, um, all right. Well, let's let let me just start with a. I don't need to name the thing, right? So I'm just going to go with um, Connor's quotes list. So um, first thing that I'm going to do, and then let's also just make like, um, so I'm shift clicking this to open it up in the sidebar so that I just have another workspace here. And so as I'm going to go through here and, and we could, um, we can basically, let's actually just do this. Let's go to, um, Let's go to that. Let's just pull up this uh, this meeting note because um, we can also just drag it into this conversation. 
So if there's particular things that we want to look at, like this one, um, I can just hold the option key and drag it over here. And so now I've got it referenced. So basically like I can go through here and sort of say like, okay, like here's some stuff that I think might be fun for us to think about. Um, and yeah, like as I'm going, if I, if I decide I want to, um, uh, I think, I think my first pass, this is my first time looking at this. So I think the first thing that I am going to look for are just kind of like, are there some themes that are interesting or are there some like words that are interesting that might be like, I'm curious if they exist elsewhere in the database. Right. So, um, is, is there any way with, before going like word by word, what, what I'm most curious about is like, are there themes, are there patterns in this list? Mm -hmm. Is there any way to like ask it, what are the five most common words or some, something like that? That'd be cool. Um, there isn't yet. There isn't a like, uh, that it's not a bad feature. Um, right now we just have the ability to like, like, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to read through it and I'm going to see what themes are interesting that I'm forming as I read through it. Um, so it's still, I would say the, the interesting connection stuff is going to come after you've started to like, I guess, structure the data yourself, um, or like start to look for patterns yourself. Yeah. I'm already um, noticing actually some things I could, I could do to make it more understandable, more accessible, more, some are lacking attribution. So I need to look up where those came from. Yeah. Um, but so let me see if I understand. So I, I want to spend some time on this too. And actually there's not quite a hundred here. I have, I have some others to add, cool. but like, how do you think I should go about organizing this or cleaning it up? Is it, is it mostly selecting words, hitting double bracket and seeing what else is I there? mean, so the other, the other thing that I would say is like, all right, let me, um, so like, I guess my, my first pass through it would sort of be um, like looking for some, I guess, looking for some themes, right? Um, and so, you know, on my like, on my quotes list right here, I might, I might sort of ask, all right, like what am I, um, let me actually just put it in this daily note. Like what am I looking for here? I'm sort of like, um, like what, you know, it's like, what is Tiago really, um, let me make this like a heading. Um, How did you do that? Uh, that was just uh, command option one. Um, we're gonna make it so it's, you know, markdown style, but like you can also right click on a, on a bullet point and, um, you know, set the, uh. set the heading. Um, but it's uses the same uh, keyboard shortcuts as Google Docs. So okay. um, basically just what, what you would do in Google Docs, you would do here. Um, and like, yeah, like it seems like, like maybe there's something around like creativity. I spelled that wrong. Um, right. So I think the first thing I might, be going through is I might just like actually add some um, so tags and links are the same thing in Rome for the most part mm -hmm. um, they're just styled differently so if for instance I decide that like nothing happens unless first in a dream is something that I think is actually about creativity then if I just put a hashtag if I if I just put hashtag creativity um, it'll give me a link also if I do like hashtag like and then link uh, to something like creative process, right? Um, like that's, that's also those, that's those also, two are equivalent. Oh yeah, it looks the same. Two are equivalent. Yeah, um, it's just that if you have a multi-word tag, you have to use the the double braces uh, as well, okay. right? Um, so, you know, that might be. I think the first thing that I would want to do is sort of like, um, like basically read through these and sort of. Like this, this seems also to me like creative process. Um, uh, you know, all the fundamentals of life are crying out to be shaped or created, right? And so you can you can start by, like, um, like like there. So there's a couple options. One is you could like one by one tag these things this way, 
or you could say because like i said like those um the indentation structure um like respects the whole the whole path so if mm -hmm. i decided that i wanted to like tag a bunch of notes with creative process i can just drag and drop them around uh, interesting and, um and do stuff like that and so, so then it's like the sub bullet points inherit the overarching one yeah so now if i like so let's say this this whole thing is a set of quotes right and these ones are about creative process so if i go in here and i just say i'm going to do a, a query for creative process um quotes right um then you know those okay. notes will appear there and so that means that if i like if i were on the creative process page right and I just started writing my own sort of thoughts about the creative process, but then like, you know, somewhere in here, I just tag like quotes, right. And like grab one of these or grab something else and dragged it into here. Then it would also appear um, in that query. But that's, again, that's like a little more advanced. And is, yeah, is, there, any, is there anything for, so go, if you go back to the quotes, yeah. Is there any particular format? Like these are just strings of text. Yeah. And then followed by a dash in most cases, not in every case, but in most cases, the person's name. Is there any like particular format for quotes that would be more, that would be better? Um, I mean, like you can always, you know, like center them, right? Um, if you wanted to. I think for, I just mostly tag things with quotes actually is is how i do it and then i I'll, I'll put the person's name here and I'll, I'll i would i think my first step would probably be just like going through and and linking people's names and then you know searching through and doing link all yeah. um um but that's the only real formatting that i would do for this uh for my first pass at, at this thing right is like um you know, like this is, oh, this is cool. Um, like, yeah. Uh, okay. So this is good. Let's, I think we should definitely publish this, but let's do like a, let, give me some time to kind of play with it, which I can also record. I mean, so one, one thing we could do that I was thinking, because this is why I was imagining we, we should, we should do a, um, the first call should be like a closed door one. Cause I kind of want to just read these and chat with you about them. But I, I think, or like, or like maybe the first thing too, is like, if you, and you, we could also, you could also do this with somebody else. Um, uh, like, or like with a larger audience, but I'm like, like, I kind of want to just interview you about these quotes and what you were thinking. Um, because the, the real thing that's interesting for me is like, do you already have any associations between these quotes? Like do yeah. some of these things already like mean something relative to each other? Because there's all sorts of crazy stuff that we can do, right? Like, well, let's Connor, I think, I think we should do episodes 20 minutes. It's been about 20 or so minutes, 25 minutes. Yeah. Let me do episode two on my own, just live talking through going through these and organizing them. You look, you look at them separately on your own if you want to. And then we'll right. do an episode three where we actually like. Let me just show that. you, let me just show you one thing before you go that I think you might get a kick out of. Cause there was a, a couple people did mention this idea of um, like flow charts for, as a way of like displaying these things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just want to, I just want to show you this one thing real quick. So if you multi-select these things and you copy block refs, um, so like the, the downside of dragging and dropping them here where I like was nesting them to the creative process is that, you know, it's, it's changing the underlying list, right? Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. like it's a destructive operation. But the thing I was just going to show you is like, um, let's say you wanted to generate a diagram and then you just paste the reference to those things. Right. Um, now, and this is, this is a little bit more of a, uh, a weird feature. Let me zoom out here. Um, Oh, I think my, um, there we go. I have to control move these things. So like this is just, you could take them and, and display them in a, uh, in a few different ways, right? So you can like take your quotes and like, if you wanted to do a flow chart of the quotes, um, 
cool and say like okay well like this thing is you know related to this one and this one sort of is connected to this one right you can sort of like and it's a our diagramming tool is has a lot to be desired compared with you know things which are just designed for diagramming um but like if you wanted to do like a venkat two by two or something like this the advantage here is that these things are now they're all still connected to the original location right cool. um and they're they're also connected to like yeah the notes that we were taking on them or similarly like if i wanted to do the same thing instead of a you know a diagram if i wanted to do a table right and i wanted to like all these different ways that you might have for like manipulating and interacting with these cards um you can have it all in one sort of central brain but you yeah. know the display is based on what's the problem you're trying to solve at that moment for for yeah. thinking about organization of it so yeah that's the last thing i wanted to show you but then yeah i'd love to, i'd love to do a chat actually about the content of it but now that it's in here i can actually read them do you mind if i like Add a couple of my own tags. No, go for it. Go for okay. it. But is cool. there like so? What you just showed me with the diagram is there like a directory of, of of those or of the different visual formats? Like, how do I find those? Um, the easiest way right now would be um, like to click this link to go to the the help database. Um, a lot of these are, you know, uh, somewhat advanced features that currently you know our our documentation has a lot of things to be desired but if you click to like roam demo videos um this will give you a list of like uh other courses that are out there nats is a paid course but then there are a bunch of other ones which are totally free um and then tutorials by features are down here so this will show you like queries sidebar to do the to do is a nice one this is like maybe not as relevant for this particular activity, but just um, like hitting command enter will toggle these these checkbox states, which toggle things between to do and done. And that actually pairs really nicely with backlinks and the queries and filters because I can find all of my high priority to do's that I can do in a particular context or in a really particular project. And I can have the to do's just be generated during my meeting notes and on like whatever, whatever page I'm on, I can just make it to do, but they're all getting captured in the central location that they can then be filtered through so okay. um so yeah this this page on uh of rome demo videos is probably the best guide right now also like um you know these three places rome brain rome tips rome hacks we're we're working on making a more centralized library but this sort of start here section is is probably your your best bet um and that you can get to by just clicking that that uh help database in the okay. doc Good. I f I'm feeling the need to play. Cool. Great. That's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited to read these quotes because there is like, uh, yeah, and I, I like this. I've, I've heard one feature request, which was let me know what words are uh, in, in this particular thing I'm looking at. What are the words that are common? Because you're right, that would actually be a super handy feature. So um, yeah, anyways, thanks for the call. This has been great. Yeah, let's do another one. Give, give me some time to play around with it and then we'll do a part two. And we, it can be a, I'm envisioning like a YouTube playlist, which is like Connor teaches Tiago how to use Rome. That would be amazing. That would be super amazing. All right. Um, in a way, it's like my, it's, it's like, it's a real asset that I'm so ignorant of it because I'm just asking the questions that I'm sure every new user to Rome asks because they're just completely ignorant. Well, and, and but there's a different, there's a slightly different thing too, which is that I think you, uh, you have thought a lot about the problem domain, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like that's like, I think the, I, yeah, I won't throw too much on you, but maybe on the next call, I'll show you like how our approach to progressive summarization and some of the things that, um, that I've seen you teach a lot of people how to do that, that, that are really helpful. So we'll save that for the next, the next call. But like, yeah, I think the underlying mental models are there. It's just, you know, you got to learn the features. Yeah. Yeah, it's learning how they're manifested. Yeah. All right, cool, man. This is great.